Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the To Do List. This is the show where we talk to the people behind the productivity about how they implement productivity strategies in their personal and professional lives, so that you can be inspired when you hear how other successful people have failed and then succeeded at daily productivity. This week, I'm talking with Dave Delaney from Nashville, Tennessee. Dave is uh, what I would call just a networker's networker. He is, he's been a recognized leader and speaker in digital marketing, social media strategy, and community enthusiasm. However, his calling, I believe, has probably been just a connector. He co-founded PodCamp and BardCamp in Nashville, and he also launched two other monthly events there called Nash Cocktail and Geek Breakfast. Why networking? Why, how does that tie into productivity? Because nobody can do it on their own. And when it comes to a project that you need help with, you need to have a network of people to be able to connect with to do that. And there is a way to do that efficiently. So Dave's going to give us some tips on how to think about maybe meetups and events and one-on-one networking and how that can benefit your productivity. Well, this week, it is my privilege to talk to Dave Delaney from Nashville, Tennessee, like what is turning out to be like almost most of my guests, honestly. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Dave. <laughs> Thanks for having me, sir. It's great to be here. Now, I know that you are connected to just a lot of people. You're uh, what I would almost call a, a consummate networker or a, a, if, if superhero networker was a word, I would use it. It's two words. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you co-found – let's start right off. You co-founded uh, PodCamp Nashville – and Bar Camp Nashville, what are those? Um, Bar Camp Nashville is a uh, technology – well, they're both technology unconferences. Unconferences being they're, they're less structured than traditional conferences. They're also both free for anyone to attend. Um, they're sort of built by the community and for the community. So both events – um, are not barcamp.org and podcamp.org are, are uh, you know, the, uh, both have original sources for, for each, each conference and each has its own story. But right. with Barcamp Nashville and Podcamp Nashville, um, the, diff- the big difference is Barcamp is more about heavier on technology, more about hardware and software, where Podcamp is more about content creation, blogging, social media, digital marketing, and of course, podcasting, which, which is where the pod comes from in Podcamp. Right. Okay. And there is one coming up in May 4th. Is that right? Yes. Or yeah, May 4th. 4th. May 4th. Of 2013. So if you're listening to this and this is past, sorry we missed you. But Dave is going to be there. I'm going to be there. We're both actually speaking. What are you yeah. speaking about? Well, I called my presentation Naked Productivity. Uh, I'll <laughs> show you mine if you show me yours. Um, and – you know, I've spoken at a lot of pod camps and bar camps over the years, not just in Toronto, but in um, in or not just in Nashville, rather, but in in Toronto is what, one of the places. Um, and what I want to talk about here is not so much. I'm not doing a canned presentation this time. I've done presentations before um, about an array of different topics, from like promoting your podcast to um, exploring digital legacy when you die, what happens to that content, things like that. This time around, I'm. Um, I'm opening. I, I really want it to be an open discussion on productivity, and and really gauge from the from the crowd, you know, what people are using, what tools they're using, what apps they're using. I have my own sort of workflow that I use, and and different tools that I use. But everybody knows that we can always. Uh, there's always room for in- improvement in all of our own product productivity. And I think in this day and age, it's it's a big hot topic that we all need to. Uh, Explore further. So what I what I'm going to do is is open up the discussion and and get people engaged and, and adding their own content or adding their own uh, 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 tools and things that they use. And I'll record the session so that way I'll have uh, an audio file of it afterwards, and then I'll do a blog post recap to, so that way we you know we can take a look at like all the stuff that was talked about. So that that way people don't forget. You know they can revisit that blog post later. Yeah, I am looking forward to that one. I saw your title and was like, huh? And then I looked <laughs> what it was about. And so I was like, okay. And I clicked uh, sign up. Mine is uh, building your digital brand without demolishing your personal life. That's right. going to be kind of a, a cross between, you know, how do you do some social media? How do you do blog? How do you do life? 
So throw productivity into the mix of social media and digital online brand building and all that kind of stuff. And just how do you do it without going crazy? Some for basic first steps or even some stuff people haven't thought about that have been doing it for a while that may make their life easier and that have made my life easier as I you know brought out this podcast and uh, which wasn't part of my mix and now it is. And so yeah, just that just that. So people want to come <laughs> if people want to come hear me do that. That's again May fourth. In Nashville, Tennessee, and and if they want to go find out more about it, it's podcampnashville.org, and yeah. it will be there as well. So there's our plug great. for that, <laughs> and it's free. And and yeah, I just I should let folks know that also. I mean, each year seems to get more uh, in the numbers of attendees, and I think we're looking, we're expecting anywhere between five to eight hundred people. So wow. it's going to be huge, and and a lot of people coming from all over the place for yeah. it. So I encourage people to to really take a look at it and, and, and think about coming because it's, it's a free day in Nashville. So and yeah. it's lots of good stuff. Uh, last time I went was uh, 2012s and that was – no, 2011, sorry. And uh, I didn't meet you there and, and I wish that I had. So I, I think ultimately probably I followed you on Twitter because of that. So yeah. uh, but that's one of the things that brings up to mind is just – when you're going to an event, it's not just about the content of the you know the material that's at there, you know the keynotes and the sessions and whatever and the breakouts. It's about the people too. Uh, wouldn't you agree? I absolutely agree. It's all about the people. It's all about you know going to these events and meeting people. I mean, that's you know you're they're all there for similar reasons. I mean, you all have you know, and that's what networking is all about. It's meeting people with like minded interests, you know, or like minded people with similar interests. And 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 PodCamp is you know, as we're since we're talking about that, that's a perfect example of you know a, a group, hundreds of people gathering with all similar interests, all around the same sort of ideas and 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 meeting for the first time. So or or meeting for the first time on offline as opposed to online. Right. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm I, that was what I was thinking of was when I've gone to some of these live events. I've met for the first time people that I've known for years. Like you and I have never met face to face, but I'm right. going to be real excited to see you face to face and shake your hand and yeah. you know sit and talk for a while. That'll be awesome. And I think if you think about it in terms of productivity wise, we'll tie this in here is if you're if you're looking beyond just tasks and sometimes people, you know, tasks grouped together become a project or sometimes projects broken down and become tasks, you can't always all you know do every single p- task on there. Sometimes for a project you're looking for, you need to have somebody else who has expertise and you don't know where to turn. And that's what these type of events are good for is to network with those people ahead of time that you can help and they can help you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree completely. So – do you have any kind of just best practices in terms of maybe for people that are already planning on attending an event like this one, what can they do ahead of time to prepare for that? Well, doing doing your homework, as you mentioned, I mean, look at the people that are attending. Most of, most conferences nowadays will have an open invitation or an open uh, RSVP list using services like Facebook events or using their own services or Ticket Biscuit or Eventbrite or whatever it is. A lot of times the, the list of attendees is open. So you can have a look and see who else is attending and maybe start networking online because most of these will, will link back. Meetup is another one. will link to that person's profile where you can learn more about them, find their Twitter account, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. And, and it's a good way for you to reach out and, and, and start connecting before the event and even plan to connect at the event. Another thing you can do is, is look at the sponsors that are going to be there. Those are people that, that may be worth talking to depending on what your business is and, and things or if, if it's just something that you're interested in reach out to them ahead of time and maybe set up some time to sit down and talk while you're at the event together um, these are great things to do also business cards bring your business cards i know it sounds so old school but business cards still are important business cards have and have a website have a blog or have a splash page or have that business card point somewhere so that you know, people can learn more about you, and you can connect again after the event. So, business cards is really it's, it's an important thing to uh, to carry with you as well. What about when you get to the event? If you've done some of that stuff, when you get there, maybe you how do you meet? How do you try to meet the people that you're supposed to meet at the at the event? 
Well, I mean, meeting the people that you're supposed to meet, you may want to pre-plan that to say, let's meet, you know, at the lobby or by the front door at noon or whatever, or meet over lunch by whatever the the, <laughs> the place is. Yeah. But I mean, also, you know, just looking at name tags and and you know, if it's not if it's not someone that you've planned to meet, but just meeting people, I think going to these events and just starting to talk to people, you know, find people that, you know, oftentimes at events and networking events and at conferences and things, you find people that are kind of by themselves sort of in a corner. And that may be a great person to go and talk to because they're kind of stuck there, maybe overwhelmed like you are. So it's a good way to, good way to chat. Now, are you an extrovert or would you call um, your, which way would you go? Extrovert or introvert? I'm uh, definitely more extroverted. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly more extroverted. So for you, it's going to not not necessarily be as as big of a deal to you know walk up to some stranger and just say, "Hey, hi, I'm Dave," and you know start talking. What what would advice would you give maybe to somebody who is an introvert? I think starting slow. You know, you don't have to you don't have to rush in there, but observe first and and listen to what people are talking about around you. As I mentioned, I mean, there are other people that are introverted that are there too, and and. You know, and they may be miserable <laughs> because of this, but it, the point is to go and introduce yourselves. Luckily, at conferences and events, people are wearing name tags, um, so that's a good opportunity for you to to see their name at least and introduce yourself. Practicing your little short pitch beforehand, not a pitch specifically, but like an elevator pitch, I guess. Yeah. Who you are, what you do, why you're at the event, and go and introduce yourself to somebody and and uh, ask them what they're doing at the event. Ask questions and let. Let people that you're talking to do the bulk of the talking, um, you know, in an awkward way, of course, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. I think that I think those those are good steps in the right direction. Um, so that's that's one that's something that I would recommend for sure. One trick I've found is is because I am an introvert and and mm. I you know I just don't <clears throat> have an easy time of just going up to somebody that's a stranger. But if I can shoehorn the conversation somehow by having already talked to them online. Then that's a that's a whole lot better. So definitely, you know, following the hashtags of the mm-hmm. event on Twitter and seeing if somebody seems interesting or says something smart or you know that you appreciate, you know, hit, hitting reply and replying to them and maybe striking up the online conversation portion yes. first, and then you know, oh, he looks like that, and if you see him pass, hey, so and so, and stop him, hey, hey, you know, and then then it's not, you know, so to speak, your first conversation with them. That's right. So, well, yeah, I recommend um, Carla Swank, who's one of the organizers of PodCamp this year, who's also just a, a terrific person. She's involved with PodCamp Pittsburgh as well. She wrote a blog post, not to plug my blog here, but um, <laughs> but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> she wrote a post called We All Need a Safety Net, which is a guest post on my blog, which is uh, at new-networking.com. But I recommend having a look at that post. That's a good one um, if you're if you're introverted. It's a good one to review. I think the thing too, you know, because – if you are introverted, you can stay home and not go. But I think I think a lot of the times it takes the courage, and, and it does take courage. But to kind of bite the bullet and say, you know what, I've got to do this. And it, and I I often compare it to you know job search or dating. You know, it's something you know you're <laughs> you, you're gonna need to do at some point, or hopefully you'll do at some point. Um, so I recommend I recommend checking that blog post out. There's also another guest post. By Britt uh, Rabel, who's a friend, who wrote a post called How an Introvert Can Network Without Going Crazy, which is also another good one to check out. Okay. I'll make sure to put the links to these posts in the show notes for this episode then. Great, great. I think they'll help your listeners. Awesome. So then uh, we've talked about pre and, and during. How about post? What if you're leaving the event and how do you you know, maintain or you know, add those people into your network that you met there? I think it's very important to take notes as you're meeting folks. And I know that can be uh, awkward depending on the situation. But if you meet someone that you really enjoyed, well, first of all, with the business card etiquette thing, it's it's best to ask somebody for a business card before handing one out. Yeah. And, and so do that. But when you get their business card, you know, after you finish talking, um, bring a pen with you and go over to, you know, a quiet corner or go to the bathroom or whatever you have to do and take a note on the business card of what you talked about with that person. That'll really serve uh, as a good reminder after the fact why you should follow up with them. Because especially if you're at a conference where you're meeting tons of people, you know, you can, the business cards can easily get confused. So it's, that's a good thing to do. After the fact too, I mean, follow up with, follow up with the people that you met, connect with them on LinkedIn 
I highly recommend doing that. And 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 when doing that, don't do it in a gen, don't use LinkedIn's generic. I'd like to add you to my professional <laughs> network. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, personalize the message. Luckily, LinkedIn keep it pretty brief, so you're you're kind of capped anyways at, at how long the message uh, will be. But use LinkedIn and send them an email and say it was you know so great to meet you at PodCamp or whatever you know the event may be. You know, I'd love to connect with you here on LinkedIn. Uh, let me know if I can ever be of service to you or ever help connect you to somebody in my network, something to that effect. Okay. And then is there any kind of way, you know, what's the best kind of cataloging or way to, you know, keep track of people's details like that? Because obviously we're not, nobody's using a Rolodex anymore. Right, right, right. I have a spreadsheet that I use. You can use just an Excel spreadsheet or, you know, save it in, in Google Drive and and update that. That helps a lot. Within Gmail, you can also do that and keep track of things. I also think there, you know, there are services that you can pay to use. One service that I really like is called Nimble, that can help you kind of keep track of all the conversations you have with people, which which kind of ties into that nicely too. So, oh, cool. Um, but even just a generic spreadsheet. I mean, it doesn't have to be a massive, you know, CRM service or you know, like Salesforce or something. Right. I mean, it can be something basic. So, yeah. You know, I mean, and the reason that you kind of want to have that kind of a catalog or that way of, you know, keeping important data about those people is there's the the whole thing about Dunbar's number, right? Where, I mean, what is that actually? It's uh, it's Dunbar's theory is that you can have only up to a hundred. You can really balance up to about a hundred between 130 and 150 relationships at any given time, um, and that's kind of at the max. So and after that, you know, you can't really scale <laughs> when it comes to to remembering all the details about everybody. And and it and it's true. I mean, it's extremely overwhelming when you have many, 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 many connections in your network. I mean, when your network grows r- very large, that that can be overwhelming. Um, so it's important to use services. Um, you know, as I mentioned, Nimble is a really good one to kind of keep track of the rela- the conversations and relationships that you're having with people. I love Facebook birthdays too, oh, yeah, because uh, that's a great reminder to follow up with folks as well. Not just to wish them a happy birthday, but if you know, but but ask them how they're doing and chat them, or even pick up the phone and give them a call. So then, if you've got this this catalog thing that can do holding data for more than that 150, you know, number that you can kind of hold in your RAM and your mental RAM, as mm-hmm. it were, anyway. Say, for example, I'm starting to do a ton of work with you, Dave, and so now I'm keeping that in, you know, my storage in my main memory. Then somebody else who I'm not talking with or not interacting with a lot. I can uh, hold their information outside of my brain and not have it take up mental RAM, so to speak. And right. that's where the benefit of that is. Mm-hmm. So I know I've heard you talk about growing your network before. Kind of some, some best tips there as far as how to grow your network. And I think you're talking in numbers, but I almost wonder – do you have any ideas on how to best grow like maybe a tree where you you deepen your roots in the amount of people in your network currently? Well, I think, you know, like strengthening the, ties that is. Yeah, I think I think keeping up appearances is important and keeping keeping in contact with folks is important. And that means following up after after meeting someone or after having a conversation, setting reminders in your calendar to maybe, you know, if someone is between work, between jobs and, you know, they're looking for something, you may introduce them to somebody else. Or, you know, this is just an example and pulling on my hat. But, you know, you can set a reminder in your calendar for a couple of weeks or a month to follow up and see how they're doing and see if they've, you know, landed on their feet or, you know, whatever the case may be. I think following up is an important part of this. You know, an important part of nurturing those relationships. Now, you've written a book that's uh, available for pre-order all about networking. It's called New Business Networking. Mm-hmm. What, how to effectively grow your business network using online and offline methods. Yes, I yes. have pre-ordered that. Thank so. you. <laughs> Everybody else should too. I'll put a yes. link in the show notes. But uh, can Thanks. you talk about the book a little bit? So I, I mean, I'm, you know, you mentioned I co-founded PodCamp Nashville and BarCamp Nashville, and I created something called Geek Breakfast, which is a monthly networking event for people that are interested in technology to come and very casually eat breakfast and, and, and hang out at a, at a local restaurant here in Nashville. And that kind of took off and other chapters started, 
appearing and growing. And, you know, I have a cocktail hour in Nashville called Nash Cocktail, and it's, it's sort of similar. And one, one day at Nash Cocktail, a friend took me aside and just said, you know, you kind of missed your calling here. You know, you really love connecting people. You know, you are like a born networker. And when I started thinking about it more and more, I started realizing that it's true that from, you know, my early days looking for, for work to kind of begin my career to moving to Nashville. I'm from Toronto originally. So from moving to Nashville where I didn't know a soul, you know, I had to network really effectively and aggressively to get myself landed here and, and connected so that I could find work and, you know, all of that stuff. I talked to some friends at, at uh, Pearson, well, Catherine Bull specifically, and she uh, suggested that it would be make a great book. And, and so, yeah, I the book is a lot about my own experiences, but and it talk, but I also talk about um, online and offline. So it's not just it's not just tech specific stuff. It's not just social networks specifically, although that is covered in the book. But it's also about simple things like like some of the stuff we've talked about already, like business cards and and databases and and meeting people for the first time and overcoming fears and finding events and attending events and sca- and creating your own events. And, and all of that mixed and combined. So I hope the book, I wrote it for really anyone specific, anyone who's interested in, in growing and nurturing their networks. And, and that includes not just business folks, but it also includes students. I really want students to, to pick this up. I spoke at Belmont University here just a week ago in, in Nashville and spoke a lot about some of the content from the book and, and, you know, the, the questions were great. The, and I, you know, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. So my point to this is that I think students also can learn a lot from, from the content of the book. So I, I, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, and I think we can all agree. We all could use a little bit more uh, honing of our skills when it comes to that area. Right. It's just one of those things where you don't, you don't consciously think, Oh, you know what? I need to figure out how to connect with people better and not just connect with them, but then be a better server servant to them as mm-hmm. well as them, you know, figuring out how to best ask for favors from them when the time comes, honestly. That's right. It's about building your network before you actually need it. Right. You know, and and the fact that it is a two-way street and that you really shouldn't be asking for anything until you've done plenty for others. That doesn't mean you can't, but you need to be building and nurturing your network so that later on down the road, should you need to, you know, tap a shoulder or somebody and, and ask for, for assistance with something, you know, you can do so and, and feel good about it. It just comes to mind that you actually recently went to South by Southwest, which is like an Uber <laughs> networking event on steroids. <laughs> it really and, is. Uh, any kind of uh, best practices you took away from that? Wow. Yeah. South by Southwest Interactive has, uh, you know, it's now, it was rumored, I think it was, I think they said 26,000 people, but it was rumored to be around possibly up to 30,000 people attending this year. Wow. Uh, yeah. It, it's crazy. <laughs> it really is crazy. Like at the end of every day, I mean, it's a week long. So at the end of every, like every night I would go back to my, go back to, uh, I was saying at Airbnb, go back to the Airbnb place, the condo, and go on my computer and enter all of the business card, all the folks on business cards that I met, all that information so that I can take notes and remember to follow up with them and what we talked about. Because, you know, you talk about, you know, I mentioned, you know, you get a lot of business cards at a conference. Well, you get a lot of business cards when you're chatting with people at South by Southwest, somewhere where, you know, that's a week long like that. So, you know, an event like that, it's kind of an exception because it's an uber geek conference so that everybody's sort of savvy with tech stuff and that's very helpful so for example you know if you're using a four, the foursquare app um you can actually see who's around you in local bars and restaurants as you're walking up and down the street the thing with south by is a lot a lot of the best stuff that occurs with all due respect to South by and the content there, but a lot of the good, the best stuff that occurs takes place outside of the convention center or at least in the hallways and, and in the bars and restaurants around the convention center, around the hotels and just in Austin in general, now that it's spread out all over the city. So using apps like, like highlight also, and, and these location aware apps in Foursquare, another great app is called bump where you can bump your uh, information and, and LinkedIn has an app called card munch, which is another great one for scanning business cards, taking photos. Um, 
but yeah, South South by is is really an exception, and it's absolutely insane. Uh, <laughs> but it's but it is a great great conference to go to. It's always worth connecting and reconnecting with folks. One other thing I was going to ask is, it, does it matter maybe what the expectation is that you have when you come in to an event, as far as what you're going to get out of it, and and maybe realize you might miss something and that let that be okay or. Yeah, I mean, with South by especially, but with other conferences too. And I use some examples and some stories in the book about you know. Well, let me tell you, at South by this year, for example, this is kind of neat. I um, so I used to go to a conference called Gnome Dex every year, Chris Perillo's conference mm-hmm. in, Se- in Seattle, and have a lot of good friends, close friends from that conference specifically, sort of the West Coast crew, um, who I don't get to see nearly as much since that conference ended. At the Sheridan, not that it matters, but at the Sheridan this year, a lot of events were taking place at South by, and I was in the escalator going down at leaving, and I and I recognized a friend um, below, and so I said, hey, "Randy," and he turned, he's like, "Oh my God, Dave!" We hadn't seen each other in like two or three years, and so we decided to get a coffee together. But the line was so long at the Starbucks that we just uh, in the lobby that we decided let's go out and go walk to somewhere and grab a quick coffee. This and this is kind of the, the craziness of South by. This bus pulls up this like trolley bus and this woman walks up to us and says hey would you like to go to the lava house and we're like what's the lava house and she explained briefly and randy just said is there coffee (laughs) and she said yes there's coffee and we're like okay so we got on this trolley bus went across the city um took us to this like really funky cool house um and as it turns out some of our closest friends um from known but numdex were actually there at the event um you know, uh, Amber Case and Chris Krug and, and friends like that were all at this house. And so we sort of had this like mini little Gnome Dex reunion over coffee and, and very delicious Bloody Marys, I may add. So it's sort of, you know, the, you, you, you have these plans, but plans change at South by instantly and, it's, and, and at bigger conferences too. And that's okay. Um, you know, you don't want to stand somebody up, but at the same time, you know, if you're just you, a lot of times, and I've had this happen where I'm waiting in line to go into a session, and somebody in the hall walks past and says, "Dave," and I'm like, "Oh," and we we start talking. Let's go get a drink, or let's go get some food, or whatever, and we just like leave and go, and and suddenly I'm meeting other people, friends of theirs, and they're meeting friends of mine, and these impromptu little meetups and meals and things just take place all the time. So, you know, you can say go with, you know, I really do suggest going with the flow um otherwise it can be extremely stressful because you end up you know yeah just getting stressed about missing things yeah definitely and, and i've can expe- you know speak to that experience i've had times where that's happened where it's been like hey i'm gonna i'm planning on going to the after party tonight and i'll tell you know a bunch of people hey i'll see you there and then some, one of my friends will say hey we're going out to dinner with so-and-so and i'm like "Ooh, i really want to talk to them <laughs> and I wouldn't have had that opportunity and I wouldn't get to talk to them because they're not going to the after party. So it's like, you know, you may have to maybe make a split second decision and just go with it. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's not just it's it's so it's two it's it's two tiered. Like there's two points to it, really. It's it's what you've just mentioned. And so you being able to determine and decide, OK, I need to go with the flow and I need to you know, this sounds like a better option because these are people I you know may not see again or whatever the case may be. Um, but the flip side of that is is also if somebody you know if you have a, a plan to meet somebody you know and suddenly that person reaches out and says oh, I can't meet you because whatever you know it's totally cool yeah and so you know you have to accept that as well and and you know there's no hard feelings it's just the way things go so speaking of plans mm-hmm. I plan to see you at PodCamp Nashville yes and everybody else should plan on seeing me there as well everybody should show up. Just come to the session and, and come hang out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, be good. I'm really excited about it. The The organizers this year have done an amazing job. I also want you know your listeners who are attending to remember that like it's all volunteer-based. And I should say I'm not involved with it this year at all, really. All the volunteers who have planned it, I mean, they've they put in their Monday nights for months and then working, you know, after that yeah. countless hours to put this thing together to make it incredible. So, you know, big hugs and high fives when you see them. Yeah. So again, we'll repeat one more time. People interested in checking that out anywhere near, you know, driving distance or flying a heck for that matter, distance to Nashville, Tennessee. It's podcampnashville.org. And Dave, where can people find you online? 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dave Delaney. That's with an E-Y. Or you can find me at DaveDelaney.me or my blog, new-networking.com. Awesome. Well, Dave, it's been awesome to network with you in front of you all too. these <laughs> listeners right now. And uh, I will see you soon. Thanks, man. Well, that wraps up another episode of Beyond the To-Do List. Thanks again to Dave Delaney for coming on the show. It's been great. Again, it's going to be great to see you if you show up at PodCamp Nashville. Go to podcampnashville.org to register for that. And go to beyondthetodolist.com slash 27 to see the show notes for this episode and to follow along on all the different tips and tricks and blog post articles, etc. that Dave and I mentioned in this episode. Please let us know how you've benefited by leaving us a review on iTunes at beyondthetodolist.com slash iTunes. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next episode. Beyond the To-Do List is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network at noodle.mx. Find more great podcasts like How to Podcast, Clean Comedy, Once Upon a Time, Christian Worldview, and more at noodle.mx. Think, laugh, and succeed by subscribing to our podcasts at noodle.mx.